You're going to want to avoid these things when you're using a bowl gouge. Hi, I'm Kent and welcome to Turn a Wood Bowl. Today I'm going to share with you six things that you're going to want to avoid when you're using your bowl gouge. These are six things that are pretty common that most of us will fall upon at one point or another and they can be very frustrating. They can even be discouraging to the point where you're going to want to stop turning because you can't figure out what's going on. But if you watch closely, you're going to see what's happening and hopefully by watching this video, you're going to discover what's been going on and you'll learn how to avoid these situations. A bowl gouge requires a little bit more time and patience to learn how to operate properly compared to a carbide scraper. Carbide scrapers basically present them on center and move them across the tool rest and you can cut the bowl blank. And while that all sounds fine and good, there are a lot of things the carbide scrapers can't do that a bowl gouge can do. So it's worth learning how to use a bowl gouge. Now, I've got a video all about the carbide scraper versus the bowl gouge, and that's a whole other topic. And we'll, you can check out this other video and see what I have to say about that. Check that out after this video. As far as the bull gouge though, you're gonna to need to use a lot more finesse and a lot more control, and you're gonna to need to understand how to position and move the bull gouge in dirt certain situations so that you don't get yourself in trouble. The benefits of learning these skills with the bull gouge is that you can make nice, clean, crisp cuts on all portions of a bowl so you're not tearing out fibers. A scraper has a tendency to tear out fibers more than a bull gouge. Now, you can turn a bowl and get a great result with a scraper and it's possible, but you're gonna see that the bowl gouge is gonna be a little bit easier for doing that. Again, check out that video that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so one of the first things that I wanna share with you with the bowl gouge that's very common and causes all sorts of problems is when you start turning a rough bowl blank, and when I say a rough bowl blank, something that's just in log form that is irregular shaped, it's not a perfect cylinder, so you're gonna have high spots and low spots. When those high spots come around, they'll have a tendency to kick the, the tip of the bull gouge around, and it can be very frustrating. You get a lot of vibration and it's really rough to turn, and it kicks the tool. So the way to avoid that is to not push into the bull blank. It's real common to want to push into the bull blank thinking that you're going to shave away that surface, but instead what you really want to do is you want to press down on the tool rest. When you press down on the tool rest, what happens is you're guiding the tool across the, the path of the tool rest, and that is independent of the bull blank. So what you're doing is you're making small incremental slices across the tool rest and you're slicing away those high spots. Instead of letting the bull blank push your bull gouge around, you're just moving the bull blank across the tool rest with a lot of control and slicing away the top part of those high spots. And the way to do that is, again, you press down with your left hand into the tool rest, you put the tool up against your body if you can, and you simply shift your body weight from left to right or right to left, depending on the cut you're making. Now, I've got a video all about how to shift your body and how to move your body when you're turning as well, and you're gonna to wanna to check that out because that is super important. Don't press into the bowl, but instead to press down into the tool rest and glide across the surface and take those high spots down so you don't let the bowl blank control the situation. Okay, so the second thing that you're gonna to wanna to avoid when using a bull gouge is to not bite off more than the bull gouge can chew. What do I mean by that? Well, if you've watched my videos, you know that these are the two bowl gouges I use most often. This is a 5 8 inch 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge, and this is a half inch 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge. And just to be clear, the measurement is the diameter of the shaft, not the flute. And this is how we measure it in the United States. They do it differently elsewhere. So some places measure the flute. So this is 5 8 of an inch, this is a half inch. What happens is each of these tools can remove, the, the bigger the tool, the more material can be removed. However, each of these tools has a point where the tip and the cutting edge becomes overwhelmed. And that has to do on several different factors. There can be the, the wood itself, if you've got a harder wood that's more difficult for the cutting edge to cut into. 
the speed of the lathe, the power of the lathe, all sorts of different things play into this. But if you overwhelm the tip of that by taking too much and trying to bite off too much, you're going to get catches, you're going to get hesitations. And if you don't get the catches, you're most likely going to be ripping out ingrain fibers and you're not going to have a smooth finish on the surface of your cuts. Instead, you're going to be ripping everything out. So you want to slow down and realize that the size of your bull gouge does determine how much or how deep a cut can be. So instead of making really deep cuts and trying to remove a lot of material fast, make shallower cuts and make cleaner cuts by doing that and you don't overwhelm the bowl gouge. Especially when you're making the last cuts on the exterior of the bowl or the last cuts on the inside of the bowl, you want to be making very fine, light, thin, almost as thin as a hair passes across there. So you're just making a nice, clean, smooth cut and you want to slow the pace down. You don't want to just be pushing the bowl gouge through the bowl really quick because again, you're going to overwhelm the tip of the bowl gouge and you're going to not be left with a great surface on the, the bowl itself. So take your time, slow down, realize that each bowl gouge can only cut so much and make light passes and just remove just what needs to be done and what is comfortable for each bull gouge and with the type of wood that you're turning. Again, soft woods, you may be able to take a deeper cut than you can with a hard wood. Wet woods versus dry woods, all that. All of the variables that come into this, you're going to know right away when you put the bull gouge in and you're trying to make a cut that's too deep because you're going to feel resistance. You're going to see that the bull, the lathe might be even getting sluggish or slowing down a bit and you may get a catch. And if that's the case, you need to back off and make a little bit lighter cuts and lighter, slower passes with the bull gouge. Okay, so the next thing you want to avoid when using a bull gouge is moving the cutting tip of the bull gouge into an area where you encounter more wood than the, the, than the cutting edge can handle. And what am I talking about? Well, this is common in places where you have an inside corner, especially around the tenon or the shoulder, or if you have an inside corner. So you may be cutting smoothly around the side or along the side of the tenon, and then all of a sudden you come to a flat spot, 90 degrees to your cut. If you keep moving the bull gouge into that material, now you've engaged both the cutting edge and the other side of the tip of the gouge into this cut and the bull gouge can easily become overwhelmed and you can get a catch. So what you want to do in those instances is you want to stop before you get to that other surface and you don't run into that and try to do more cutting than the tip of the bull gouge can handle. Just keep in mind the bull gouge and each bull gouge can only handle so much material before it becomes overwhelmed and by Introducing two areas where it's cutting at one time is a great way to overwhelm the bull gouge. So instead you want to stop. Now lots of times too when you see me clearing out the inside of a bull, I make a lot of concentric rings and I shave away material and move down the inside of a bull blank. And when I'm doing that, if you notice, I stop right before I get to the previous cut. So I'm not engaging more wood than the bull gouge can handle. I'm stopping and basically making one pass at a time and I'm not overwhelming that bull gouge. So just keep that in mind. Now, as far as tenons and making that nice crisp corner in the bottom of the tenon, instead of using the bull gouge, which doesn't have the ability to get down into that corner very well, and it doesn't have the ability to angle backwards into that corner very well. Instead, what you're going to want to use is the spindle detail gouge. The spindle detail gouge has a longer point and it can reach down into that corner and clean out the bottom of that corner very well. And it can easily form that inside dovetail angle for you as well. So, Again, remember with the spindle detail gouge, you don't ever want to use this to remove large amounts of material on a bull blank, but for doing the detail work inside of a tenon, it's perfectly fine. Before we get to the next three things you don't want to do with your bull gouge, I want to share with you guys my online wood bull turning course where I go through everything you need to know to learn how to turn a bull. Now, what might not come across in that title is the fact that Everything we do in the course is done with a bull gouge. 
and everything is done methodically, step by step, through all the steps of turning a wooden bowl. And I'll show you exactly how to be using your bowl gouge, how to position it, where it should be located in every cut and every pass so that you can quickly learn how to turn the bowls that you imagine. Now, all the lessons in this course are set up in a really simple, clean order that's very easy to follow along. And you can come back to them anytime you want. It's super easy to find out, for instance, how do I turn the inside of the bowl and make sure I get a good smooth cut in that in that inside pass. Well, you can go right back to that lesson and you can take a look at it and go through it if you're having a little bit of issues when you're at the lathe. It's super simple to go back. And I gotta tell you, there are tons of people who have taken this class and have really enjoyed it. Now, let me share with you some of the things that they've said about this course. The real question here is what is it worth to you to learn and develop the skills to turn the bowl that you imagine in the matter of a few days versus months or years? Or worse, try to learn it on your own and struggle and get frustrated and get some of the nasty catches, the things that we're talking about in this video. You get some of those to happen and it becomes a little bit discouraging and you set things down and one day goes by and weeks go by and months goes by and you've pretty much set it aside. I, I don't mean to be discouraging, but I see that way too often. I'm here with this channel making these videos and this course and my other courses to help inform you about what to do so that you can learn how to make bowls. Because I'll tell you what, when you learn to turn wood bowls, it is super exciting because you just burst open with ideas like, what if I make this bowl and what if I do that? But you need to learn all the basic skills first. And that's what this course teaches you, all of the basic skills. So I hope you check it out. I'm gonna put a link down here, I think it's down here at the bottom of the screen, that'll show you where you can go to check out this course and get more information. You can learn all about it. And the great thing is you're gonna learn in a much shorter period of time, all the skills and techniques you need to make any wood bowl that you want. Okay, so the fourth thing you want to avoid doing with your bowl gouge is very subtle, but it can be frustrating. And you'll see what happens here. What happens is if you rub the heel of the bowl gouge instead of riding the bevel, or some people like to say floating the bevel, and when we ride the bevel or float the bevel, the bevel profile or the, the flat part of the bevel is parallel with the surface of wood that's being cut. The cutting tip of the bull gouge is engaged, but the bevel right behind it is perfectly parallel with the surface you're cutting. If you take that, that angle and you move forward, so the cutting tip is going in, but the bevel is not floating, then your tip is gonna dig in and you're gonna start making a deeper and deeper cut until you get a catch because your bull gouge becomes overwhelmed. If you're floating the bevel, that's what you want. If you go backwards so that the heel, the heel, the bottom part of the bevel, or if the bevel is being pushed into the wood, what is happening is you're rubbing the heel. Okay, doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Now, if you do it severely, then the bull gouge, the cutting edge will come out of the cut. So you'll go from whatever the depth of your cut is to thinner and thinner until the tip just pops out. That's a good indication that you're rubbing the bottom of the bevel or the heel. So you might be thinking, well, so what's the big deal with that? Well, the surface of the wood is not all even as far as density. The side grain fibers are usually softer on most woods than the ingrain fibers. So if you're pressing, you might be thinking, okay, so what does that mean? Well, if you're pressing and you're putting force into the wood. Now, remember the first one that we mentioned, the first issue that we talked about is if you're pressing into a rough bull blank, it's going to be those high ends that are going to come around and beat up your bull gouge and it's going to give you all kinds of vibration. But if you have a nice smooth cylinder that you've, you've cut relatively smooth, you're not going to get all of that impact from those areas that are sticking out. Instead, you've got a smooth surface. So it, you might have 
the tendency to push into that cylinder. And when you push into it, what you're doing is you're compressing the soft fibers, the side grain fibers of the bull blank. And you're gonna get this ripple effect because the bull gouge and the heel especially is gonna burnish or press those fibers down where the wood is soft, but it won't be able to do it where the wood is hard, usually on the ingrains. So as the bull goes around, you're gonna be making ridges in the bull. So if you've ever had this appearance of your bowl where you've got these little wavy lines or wavy areas on the side of the bowl, this is what's happening. You're pushing the bevel or the heel into the bowl. You, you don't want to do that. Again, you go back to the first thing that we mentioned in this video. What you want to be doing is putting pressure down into the tool rest and simply gliding your tool across the tool rest and not pushing into the bowl blank. Another thing to keep in mind is that you can see these ridges really well if you take your light and you move it to the side so you're looking down the side of it. And what's happening is the light is lighting one side of the high spot and then on the back side of the high spot the light doesn't get there so it creates a shadow. So you're able to see the shadow of those ridges much easier. Moving the light in that position it's a good way to indicate if you're having this issue. Again, put pressure down on the tool rest and move smoothly across the tool rest independent of the bull blank even when the bull blank is very smooth and round and cylindrical okay so the fifth thing that we're going to talk about is something that can happen to you easily if you come to the bull gouge after you've learned how to use a carbide scraper with a carbide scraper it's very easy to make moves where you just move back and forth and kind of scrape away material and that's how this tool works and so it's not that big of an issue However, if you are into a particular cut and you move the bull gouge back and forth, you can get some nasty catches. And I'm gonna explain that in just a second. This brings up another point that's really important is that if you're just starting out and you're not sure what you wanna do. Now keep in mind, I'm a big proponent on doing what works best for you. If you want to use a carbide scraper, by all means, use one. If you want to use a bull gouge, use one. If you want to learn both of them, that's fine too. However, I'm going to explain something to you. If you start off and you learn how to turn with, a, with carbide scrapers, and that's all you know, and then you try to go learn a bull gouge, you're going to have to keep in mind there are several different techniques, movements, and positions that you must learn with a bull gouge that if you try to use the bull gouge like a scraper, you're going to get in trouble. And this is one of them. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you know how to use the bull gouge and you want to try your hand at a carbide scraper, that's pretty easy. Going back and from the bull gouge to the carbide scraper, that's pretty easy. But just remember, there are techniques, especially the back and forth and just kind of scrubbing an area with the carbide scraper that you really can't do with a bull gouge. And this is one of them. Let me show you. So when you're cutting the interior of a bull blank and you're making the curve around the inside interior of a bull, you need to be pointing the bull gouge in the direction of the cut. That's true for almost all the cuts you make with a bull gouge, push cuts at least. You're gonna be pointing the tip of the bull gouge in the direction you're making the cut. If you decide to go backwards and use the left side of the bull gouge and just scrape backwards as you're coming out, which again, this is something you could do with a carbide scraper. You can kind of scrub that, that inside surface left and right. You'll probably be ripping out ingrain fibers, but you can do that without getting a nasty catch. However, with the bull gouge, if you pull this backwards and introduce the left side of the bull gouge where you're not riding a supported cut, all of a sudden you're gonna catch that left wing and flip the bull gouge around and you're gonna leave a nice gouge in your bowl. So you wanna be aware of that. When you're making inside passes and when you're making a cut with a bull gouge in general, you wanna make one pass from start to finish, pull the bull gouge out and then create another pass in the same direction. You don't ever wanna go backwards or use like a scrubbing technique. It does not work, okay? So that's a big one, especially again, if you're learning carbide scrapers and you're moving into bull gouges, just be aware you can't take a bull gouge and just scrub it around like a carbide scraper. Okay, so for our final thing to avoid with the bull gouge, what we really want to remember with the bull gouge is that this is not like a carving chisel. And unfortunately, this is called a chisel in many other countries. In the United States, we usually call these bull gouges, but they are also called 
fold chisels or turning chisels. And this is not like a hand chisel where you basically press down and push out wood. If you introduce the, the bowl gouge into the wood with the flute, the top part here, open, flat open, you're going to most likely not have a supported cut and you're going to introduce the cutting tip of this into the wood and quickly overwhelm the, the bull gouge and get a catch. There's just no way around it. That is not how the bull gouge is used. Now I've got a video, if you're just starting out with bull gouges, I got a video all about what you need to know if you're first starting out with bull gouges. So check out that video, it's super valuable. You're gonna learn a lot from it. The big takeaway here is we never present the bull gouge completely opened as if we're just gonna plow out material. That's not how the bull gouge is used. Instead, we're going to angle that. We're gonna angle the tip towards the direction that we're cutting, and we're gonna drop the handle a little, little bit, and we're gonna make sure that the bevel is flush with our cutting surface. And what that's gonna allow us to do with the bull gouge is make a nice slicing cut with just a small portion of the cutting tip not the whole gouge. Again, this is not like a traditional wood carving chisel that you could press with your hand or you use a hammer and just work across a piece of wood and carve out different sections of wood. That is not how a bull gouge works. And again, these are called chisels, unfortunately, because this is not like other chisels. Instead, you wanna make sure that you're introducing angles and you're presenting it to the wood where you can get the slicing cut that you need. And when you present it in that way, when you basically point the tip and you drop the handle, you're gonna get beautiful slicing cuts across the wood that sever all those fibers and leave a really nice finished surface on your bowls. And that's what you're aiming for. Again, don't use this like a plow because this doesn't plow out wood. This is a very precise tool that when used right, you can make very precise, very, intricate clean cuts with and get great results. Just keep that in mind. It's a common mistake for people when they first start out to just put that bull gouge in there and expect it to start plowing material out. And it might for a second, but it's gonna get a catch and you're, the surface of the wood is gonna look awful. Instead, introduce those angles and make a nice clean cut. All right, so there are six things that you're gonna to wanna to not do with your bull gouge, and hopefully this video helps clear those up. If you've liked this video, click that like button below. I greatly appreciate that. And if you've learned something here that you're gonna to apply to your turning, do me a favor and leave me a comment below and let me know what that is. If you're not subscribing already, be sure to subscribe and check out my website, turnofwoodbull.com. And if you'd like, I have an email sign up in this description under this video where you can sign up and I send out wood bull turning tips every single week. And you're not gonna wanna miss those. There's some great information in there. So check that out. All right, guys, I hope this has been informative and I hope that you guys decide to try the bull gouge if you're not already. And if you are turning with the bull gouge, I hope this has introduced some new things to you or some ideas or helped maybe answer some problems or issues that you've been having. All right, thank you so much for watching and as always, happy turning.